Praise the Lord. Um, did did we answer your question yes, that think, way? Yes, I think we can consider ourselves of the tribe of Judah, so we yes. are counted in that innumerable bunch. That's right. <laughs> but we being a part of his body, because he's yes. the head of the body, and the body of Christ is the church. In fact, that was, uh, we were reading there in Ephesians, and I wanted to bring that out too. Um, going back over into Ephesians chapter 1. It says here, uh, the, very, the last two verses in Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23 says, and hath put all things under his feet. We're talking about Jesus. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Verse 23. Which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. So if he's of the tribe of Judah, then I'll be saying, me too. Yes. Me too. Praise God. Um. The other verse that talks about the Father's name in their forehead is um, in chapter 22, Revelation 22 and verse 4. It says, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So in the book of Revelation, you have two verses that talk about the Father's name in their forehead. And you have two verses that say that they're sealed, mm -hmm. sealed in their foreheads. Okay, so um, now here's the, the thing. Uh, when we were covering Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17, it says here to the overcomers there, it says, uh, of one of the promises at the very end says, A new name written which no man knoweth, save, saving he that receives it. Now that's a promise to the overcomers, that you're going to get a new name. Mm -hmm. And George was talking about this uh, sometime. Uh, he, he was talking to the Lord. Lord, are you going to give me a name like Bill or Dan? And the Lord said, I will give you a new name that fits the character that I will make you to become. I hope I said that right. Is that right, George? Pretty much, yeah. See, it will remind you that you changed Abram's name to Abraham because that's what he made him to be, the father of many nations. I'm going to repeat that for the yeah. audience that you understand that you can look in Genesis um, and see in chapter 17 that Abraham's name before was Abram, which meant high father. But he, when he changed it, he said, I'm going to make you a father of a multitude. And it was really a man, a multitude of nations. Yeah. And so there is a difference between Abram and Abraham. Yeah. Abraham immediately accepted it. Don't call me. And you know, you don't ever see him being referred to again as right. Abram. Abraham. Yeah. And the same for, for um, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Her name came Sarah, which means princess. And it says, um, that's in 17, 15, Genesis 17, verse 15. And in 16, it says, she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So you can see how God changed. Um, Jacob is another one yes. because his name means supplanter. You remember he was what, twins, right? He caught his brother by the heel, right? And, um, but when he wrestled, wrestled all night, um, he was asked what his name was. And, and uh, oh, let's go over there into Genesis 32. 
32, he uh, says, he said in verse 28, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed. If you look that definition up, I think it'll just say prevailed with God. But I, you get more out of it. Prince of God, I think. Yes. Yeah, yes. When you read it out of the scripture, as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed. So that's really quite a blessing. And we were just talking about um, Simon Peter, how his na given name was Simon but the Lord called him Peter or Cephas, however you want to say it. Okay, I want, I want you to see um, in Philippians chapter 2. It says here 9 and 10, uh, Philippians 2 verses 9 and 10. It's, and this is talking about Jesus. It says, Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. If he's been highly exalted and given him a name above every other name, can you get any better than that name? That is just the thought that hit my mind. Is how can you get any better than that? Um, what a privilege to be part of the people that Peter was talking about when Jesus sent him to get a people for his name. Praise the Lord. I, I want to bring, we were in Ephesians, and I want you to see in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 14 and 15, it says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a comma there. And it says, Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's a family name. Just, I don't want to limit it at all. If you can just consider that the whole family in heaven and earth is named after Jesus. That's why you have that name called over you. Is that you get that name then. Do you see? You become a part of that family. Um, that's another important thing about baptism is that this is a covenant relationship. Just like when a woman and a, a husband and wife, very often, it used to be very common, or almost always, that the woman, the bride, would take her husband's name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, to me, I fit that, that in with Jesus saying, he's the door. And he's the way. And he gave Peter, he said, when he gave him the keys to the kingdom, he didn't stop there, he added on. Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose in heaven shall be loosed, or loose in heaven, earth shall be loosed in heaven. <coughs> to me, that has, Jesus said, I'm the door, and whoever comes, that that nobody can shut, nobody can shut. So when you go through that door and if somebody calls that name over you, I think that's an entrance through that door. Praise the Lord. I really do. I think that's the entrance through that door. And when they call that name on you, they have the ac access and the power of binding and loosing right there. And it's recorded here on earth, it's recorded in heaven. Praise the Lord. I connect those together somehow. I think there's more teaching on that, but I don't have it all. Praise the Lord. Well, entering, you know, yeah. you cannot enter 
enter the kingdom of God. That's, that's right. So there is Street. an entrance. Yes. Okay. You cannot you deny that that born again experience is an entrance yes. into the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Um, verse 13 here, it says, um, Revelation 3.13, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And so uh, I'm going to go into the Gospel of John and chapter 8. Because in that conversation with those uh, Pharisees, I'll read you 42 to 43 and then four, verse 47. It says, Jesus saith unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why, in verse 43, Why do you not understand my speech? even because you cannot hear my word. And then look at verse 47. It says, He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. And if you look at the next verse, um, Then said, answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and has a devil? You see, he's saying, you can't hear me because you don't love me. Mm -hmm. And they just come back at him, calling him a Samaritan and telling him he has a devil. That's not good. You have to love the Lord to hear. Hear. Hear what the Spirit says. Okay, let's go on into verse 14 here in Revelation 3. This is, uh, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. This is the last message to the last church. This is the seventh one. There uh, is not another one after this. I have heard in teaching, others teach on Revelation or um, in Oh, some of the commentaries that people do that these seven churches represent the seven ages of the church and that Laodicea would represent this last church age I, I've heard that but there has been things in these other churches that I think you might find like the remember and repent We've seen it three times so far, and we'll see it one more time here in, in about Laodicea, to repent, repent. And so I think a lot of churches, no matter what church age you think you, you were in or they were, they still, things were wrong, and they needed to correct it, and they needed to remember and repent. Go back, do the first works over. It, it says here to the Laodiceans, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Uh, amen actually means true. It, and it is defined as a final word used to fix the stamp of truth upon an assertion. Oh, when I was a kid, I grew up hearing um, amen means so be it. Mm -hmm. You are in agreement with right. it. Um, amen. Yes, amen. Amen. S 2 Corinthians ch chapter 1 and verse 20 says, All the promises of, of God in him are yea, or that means yes, and in him, amen unto the glory of God by us. This past Sunday, Ada was talking about having a dream. I, I think it was in your dreams or, but um, maybe it was just God talking to you about that you 
had been studying about spiritual warfare and putting on all the the helmet of salvation all the armor the whole armor Ephesians 6 talks about put on the whole armor of God um, but then she saw this bag and in this bag were some weapons and the first one that you pulled out was fear not mm -hmm. fear not I had thought about it in this bag if all the but when I've seen it online, I thought, well, I'm going to put that in there. I have the helmet of salvation, and I have the sword of the spirit, and I've got the shield of faith. And I thought, I'm going to put in there fear not. And that's the first thing I'm going to pull out. <laughs> but really what I was going to have in my bag is the arsenal that God has left us with to fight the word of God. Not that we can slay somebody with it, but that we can know the truth ourselves and not be deceived praise the lord and let no man take your crown yeah, and let because no man take your that that I'll goes with there. it yes when she talked about that sunday that night i went home yes. and i was thinking um i'm gonna get into my bag i, I mean you know you yep. projected it yep. and i was grabbing it okay i got my own bag yep. and um the first weapon that i pulled out was from second corinthians 10 where it talks about um, the weapons of our warfare. not uh, It's like being mighty and pulling yes. down strongholds. And I, I shared that with you. And, and then just a little while later, um, what was the other thing? I don't know. Isaiah 54. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isaiah chapter 54, probably about the last verse. It says, yeah. no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes. And then I sent you a message because as I was looking that up, I was singing in verse 14, her fear not, because right. it said, fear not. And if those are commandments and you're forced to obey it, it works. Yes. When you say, okay, you said it, I believe it. Amen. Well, me saying amen, yeah. when I, I was looking at this amen here, I thought, well, that's something that belongs in the bag. Yes. Something to pull out. Because you know what? All these promises that God, and there's multi, a multitude of promises here in the Word of God. It is. Promises to you that if you don't believe it, it's not amen. But I believe it, and yes. it's an amen for me. Right. And so if Jesus said, by his stripes you were healed, I'm thinking, yes, I'm healed. Yes. Regardless of what the enemy wants to tell me, I am healed. Amen. I'm saved. Amen. I like George's four square gospel. He talks about that. But you know, you look into your own bag and you pull out weapons. And they'll be with you to help you yes. in whatever situation or battle that you're fighting. That was good. Yes, it is. That's just the beginning. I feel like there's more to come on yeah. that, but we'll see. The first thing, and you know that when he's talking to the church at Laodicea, always in that first verse when he's addressing the church, he's going to give a depiction of who he is. And he is the amen. Yes. Because he is true. It says the faithful and true witness. So you, you look at verse uh, 17 or Revelation 3, no, Revelation 3 and 7, there to the church at Philadelphia. Uh, he says, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true. And then I'm looking on uh, to the first chapter, Revelation 1 and verse 5. It says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness the faithful witness and now i'm going to go back into the uh, gospel of john chapter 8 that chapter is just loaded with things and i want to read you verses 13 to 18. 13 to 18. okay the pharisees therefore said unto him thou bearest record of yourself Thy record is not true. They're calling him a liar. Mm -hmm. Jesus, in verse 14, Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but you cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. You judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Verse 16, and if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Verse 17, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Verse 18, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. Do you see the witness of two there? Two being the number of a witness. And he's saying, my father is a witness and I am a witness. There's your two. Right. Is that good? That is wonderful. Praise God. Okay. I think that we probably should stop there. Because in the next part of that verse, we're going to talk about that he is the beginning of the creation of God. And I don't think I can do it in just a few minutes, okay? Okay. Okay. Sister Ada, why don't you close us tonight in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we just want to worship you and praise you and not be counted with the hypocrites and all of those things that you've mentioned that you're not pleased with that will not enter the kingdom of God. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to keep us on that right track and Help us to hide that word in our heart, Lord Jesus, to memorize it at least enough so we know what it says and can find it. Lord, we just thank you for the word of God, for that that invisible arsenal that you gave us, given us, Lord, to fight and be well equipped in this in this earth, that this battle that we're fighting, God, because we know we're fighting powers and principalities of darkness. Lord, we don't fight the flesh, but we have to fight with the word of God, which is the living spirit. God, we thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. We ask you, Lord, to bless this word tonight, help us all to understand it, meditate on it, and devour it, God, and, and bring much fruit from it. We just thank you, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.